Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Geese Online iDegree workshop today, funding your geese business education. Um, we're very excited that you're here. We are going to give everybody just here another minute or so to join. Um, sometimes with these webinars, it's good to let everybody have an extra minute to, to get, um, get all joined up. But um, while we are waiting, um, I am going to launch a poll and see where you're all joining us from. Here's a location poll. We are always curious where all of our students, prospective students are, are coming from. Our programs are global. So we love seeing all of the different countries that the students are, are joining us from. So go ahead and fill out that poll. I am here in Champaign-Urbana, as well as my colleague, Amy Simpson, um, who is also on the webinar. And then Brian Roscoe is joining us and we'll introduce him in a minute. He is up in the Chicagoland area. So um, we are all in Illinois, which is, I guess, not too diverse, but um, we're excited to see everyone who is joining us today. So we have somebody in Africa, which is amazing. We have several from the United States, Canada, the Middle East. Excellent. We are excited that you're here. As you're finishing that poll up, I will officially introduce myself. My name is Kate Deering. Um, just a little bit about myself. I am a coordinator here within Geese Online Programs. I've been here for about two and a half years or so. Um, I did do my undergrad bachelor's from uh, University of Illinois here in Champaign-Urbana. And I currently live in Champaign with my family. So um, very excited to work for Geese. And um, today I'm actually more excited to be able to share some of this information about um, our innovative online programs, our master's programs, as well as some other Geese credentials. We uh, will talk about um, the programs a little bit. We'll give you some program information, but we're also going to dive a, a, a quite a bit further into funding your GEESE credentials or degree. As I said, Amy Simpson is here. She is excellent at answering questions in the Q&A um, and the chat. If you, if you have anything that pops up that you're thinking about during the presentation, feel free to throw those questions there. Um, and also, for our other guest, Brian Roscoe, um, he is actually, um, we're very excited that he's here. He's an alum of the IMBA program. Um, and if you have any questions as we go uh, for Brian, feel free to add those to the Q&A as well, because we will definitely have time at the end to answer those questions. Lastly, if you notice, there is a QR code on your screen. Um, let me stop this poll real quick. That QR code up on your screen right now. Um, if you are interested in having myself or Amy or one of our admission counselors um, to reach out to you sooner than later uh, to discuss your goals or any kind of program questions that you have, we would love to have a conversation with you. So just go ahead and scan that QR code. It will pop up a form to fill out, really short form, and then we will get in touch with you. All right, let's jump into the agenda. Um, Today, we will go through the program overview. We'll talk a little bit about the tuition structure. Um, I'll give you some financial resources and then we'll have time at the end for a Q&A. Um, Brian Roscoe is here, so I'm gonna have him introduce himself in a minute, but he is an alum, as I said, and we love to have one of our students present um, just to share that student experience, answer questions from their perspective. Um, you know, that's always sometimes a little bit more useful um, on, on certain questions uh, where I haven't actually been through the program. So we're super excited. Brian, would you mind um, introducing yourself and telling us maybe, you know, what, why you chose the, the Geese Online programs for your master's degree? Yeah, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening for everyone uh, joining. Uh, as Kay said, um, Brian Roscoe, I'm in the Chicagoland area. I graduated in May 2021, so I'm a little over a year out of the program, but still very involved and, and love to join these types of webinars to help out in any way I can. Um, you know, I live in the Chicagoland area in between um, 
two major MBA programs, but for me, the flexibility and that community and family feel that Illinois offered um, was, it was hard to pass up. And obviously uh, the cost, the cost is uh, obviously very, um, you know, drawing for a lot of people looking at MBA programs. And so that was another reason I jumped in. And, you know, there's different ways, obviously, that you can uh, structure your finances, whether there's tuition reimbursement or working with the bursar's office. So hopefully uh, I can help answer any questions and tell you a little bit about my journey through the program. Thanks, Brian. Um, very excited that you're here. Um, I'm curious what what program everybody is interested in just before we get started so I can make sure that we cover all of these uh, geese credentials um, and just to be able to guide us a little bit in our conversation. So go ahead and fill that poll out. Are you interested in just doing a Coursera MOOC, a non-degree Illinois course? Uh, maybe you're interested in doing three Illinois courses as a graduate certificate or one of our master's degrees. So. Um, Let's see what everybody, it looks like the IMBA and the IMSM um, and a couple IMSA students are here. So excellent, I will end that poll. We are definitely gonna cover all three of those programs. So to get started, I did wanna give you just a little bit of an overview of Geese Business Online. Um, our, our model is intentionally designed um, to, to provide these programs and, and structured courses. It's made up of three main qualities. The first one is flexibility. And, and Brian mentioned a little bit um, uh, about the flexibility, but this just means that there are no travel requirements. This, this program and all of our uh, GEESE credentials are completely online, inc including all courses and the group work. Um, They're paced to fit your needs with eight week terms where you can take one course, you can take two, depending on your schedule. Secondly, they are um, actually let me back up one more one more thing I wanted to mention is that all of our geese credentials are stackable. We have stackable credentials. You can take any of our courses that we offer as a non degree student to learn that specific um, topic. We also just launched two new campus recognized graduate certificates in strategic leadership and management and accounting data analytics. Um, those each include three Illinois courses, which then can be stacked into one of our master's degrees. Um, so there's, there's just so many options when it comes to geese business and expanding your education. Secondly, it is extremely affordable. Um, there's minimal to no added expenses above the tuition. And we do have a pay-as-you-go tuition model that we are gonna explain here in a minute where you only pay for each course that you're registered for. And then lastly, Geese Business is online by design. And, and, and that means that this program was not adapted to be in this format. It was designed back before we launched in 2016 um, to be delivered to thousands of learners worldwide. We, we tried to create this these programs to provide engaging content that you can access anywhere, anytime without giving up any of your career or your family, you know, commitments. Um, so that is, that's, that's how we design this program. And then lastly, there are two major components that we'll get a little bit into um, that are within the online by design format. And that is there's going to be a foundational material uh, component on Coursera. And then we have a, a high engagement component, which really comes from the University of Illinois and, and our faculty members. Um, and we will touch on that in a little bit as well. So I'm going to um, share a little bit about each program now. We're probably not gonna to get too deep, but we will have time for questions on each program or credential. The first degree is the Master of Business Administration. This um, program is gonna come in at just over 20, 23,000. Um, that's gonna include the total cost, tuition, and fees. Each credit hour costs $320, which makes one four credit hour course um, just over $1,200. So um, we do have a pay as you go model, as I mentioned, and you're only going to pay for each course that you're registered for uh, throughout the program. The IMBA program takes 24 to 36 months. Um, the average student comes in right around two and a half years and, and graduates. Um, 
With that being said, the IMBA does have a lot of flexibility in that you can decide what your pace is. You can take that one course per eight week term and be on that three year timeline, or you can speed it up and take two courses each eight week term and finish in just two years. We also understand everybody is super busy. Um, things come up at work or maybe you have a large project or a, some kind of family emergency. Um, if you need to take an eight week term off, that's totally fine. You would just work with your advisor on that. There are four start dates for the IMBA program, um, August, October, January, or March. And um, we also have a summer term, but we just don't have a cohort that starts in the summer. For the IMBA, you'll complete 72 credit hours, which is going to total 18 courses. And um, those 18 courses are made up of six specializations. Four will be your core courses or your core specializations. Um, and then you'll have two specializations that are going to be your focus areas where you can really fine tune your IMBA to choose a couple paths that, that interest you. And then lastly, um, you'll complete three capstone projects. Um, two of those will be after you've completed a specialization. So it's, it's a chance to bring everything together that you've learned on a specific topic. And then also before you graduate, you will have one month long program capstone project where you will work with a group and a professor to finish off your degree on that, um, that project. A couple, um, facts from our graduates you know we we talk a lot about um, the professional experience that our students bring to the classroom and one measure is the quality of the one, one measure of the quality of this network is the number of fortune 100 companies um, that our students work at and we recently collected some data from our imba students and 70 of those fortune 100 companies are represented in the imba and then more than a thousand total employers are represented in all three of our master's degree programs these last um, statistics are are pretty fabulous um, Many, many business schools measure job placement after graduation. At Geese, where the majority of our students are full-time working professionals, um, that's not a statistic that we use, um, but we do look at um, job promotions, accepting new jobs, and 61% of our students, um, in fact, do that while they're actually in the program. And then also at a time when professionals have come to expect just that 2% raise in a good year, uh, Geese IMBA grads tell us that they've received an average increase of 22% during and immediately after their IMBA program. So um, that's an instant and concrete return on your investment um, that's really hard to match. And then lastly, these, these last three statistics speak to the quality and the return on investment of the program. 96% um, rated it as excellent or good. 91% um, would recommend it to a friend. And then most importantly, 95% of our students um, applied what they learned in the program to their career. Um, I was going to ask you, Brian, do you, can you talk a little bit about that that kind of last statistic um, as far as how your IMBA affected your actual career path or specific um, instances in your career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, for me, I have a technical background. I, my undergrad, I had a background in engineering. So as I was progressing throughout my career, I really felt that I needed more of that uh, business acumen and, and education to really advance my career. So Actually, for me, it worked out great. The return on investment was was com completely warranted. Um, you know, a year into the program, I had received a, a promotion within my company and moved on to a new position. And then actually a year after getting out of the program was um, the big promotion and moved to a new role in the company that I was really seeking. And it was in more of a leadership style role, more management role. Um, and, you know, because of the MBA, I have the tools, I have the skill set that I think a lot of those employers or even upper management were looking for. Because um, not only with my experience and my background, but I was able to show them that I also had this uh, business background as well and was able to speak much more confidently in those meetings and even in the interviews to make that advancement. So for me, it was uh, the return on investment was um, fantastic and I, I couldn't be happier where I'm at now. Excellent, you fit right into those statistics. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the Master of Science in Management, the IMSM. 
And just to give you an overview, the IMSM is made up of several learner types. Um, we have non-business backgrounds looking to develop leadership and management base. Um, we have business backgrounds pivoting to include management in their skill set. And then we also have highly technical backgrounds that are looking to broaden their business knowledge. This degree costs 11000 right over 11000 and you can finish it in just one year. So pretty pretty quick um, completion right there. Um, it does have the same flexibility as all of our programs where you can take one or two courses each eight week term. Um, and typically we say this, this degree can be finished in one to two years. There are four start dates as well for this program, August, October, January, and March. And then the IMSM, is 36 credit hours um, or nine courses. Six of those are required. And then you will be able to choose three electives, either in um, some predetermined elective tracks that we offer, or you can choose any three electives that we, that we have. And then one last thing I wanted to share that's pretty exciting is that the university did just approve that the IMSM is now going to be able to be stacked into the IMBA. Uh, we are very excited about this and we are going to have many more details this fall um, with, with information about that stackability. The Master of Science in Accountancy rounds out our third online uh, master's degree. This program builds expertise in the fundamentals of accounting, financial reporting, audit and control, and also U.S. federal taxation. So, you know, whether you're a mid-level professional looking to move into that C-suite position or you're brand new to accounting, you will still be well positioned to advance your career and increase your earning potentials with, with this degree. It comes in at 20 to 28K, and we're gonna explain this a little bit more um, in just a minute, but this is a range because of your course choices. So you will have some options to choose some electives um, and based on what you choose, um, those may have a little bit of a different tuition. Students complete the IMSA in 18 to 36 months, depending on your course load. And we do have two start dates that you can begin your cohort in January or August. This degree is going to include 32 credit hours or eight courses. Five of those are required. And then you have some electives to choose from where you can choose a predetermined data analytics track or any three electives as long as one of them is a non-accounting elective. So this is just, that was an overview of those three um, online master's programs. And we do have a couple of other stackable credentials that I wanted to, to touch on. Um, we just recently launched two new graduate certificates um, that are stackable into uh, all three uh, of our online master's programs. So these graduate certificates um, are made up of Illinois IMBA, IMSA, and IMSM courses. They will be um, 12 hours of transcript credit when you are finished, and you will earn a transcriptable certificate upon completion that will come from the University of Illinois. These have a very brief um, application that includes your bachelor's degree, um, transcripts, a resume, a brief personal statement, and then also an English um, language proficiency test if you are an international student. The two that we just launched are strategic leadership and management, as well as accounting data analytics. And as you can see on the slide, there's three courses, um, and those three courses are listed underneath. So um, these are stackable into any of our I degrees, or they can stand on their own. If, if you just take a graduate certificate on its own, um, this is going to be recognized as a domain mastery of that topic. So still a, a great credential um, that eventually you can build upon if, if you choose to. Okay, so we covered some of our GEESE credentials. We, we covered the master's uh, programs. I just wanted to touch on the, the makeup of our courses. And every Illinois course is gonna have two components. One is, is on Coursera. Um, and these courses are called Massive Online Open Courses or MOOCs. They're made up of pre-recorded videos, some quizzes, um, Actually, those pre-recorded videos are from your faculty members that teach the Illinois courses. I did want to mention that. Um, these are done asynchronously on your own time. They, 
the other great thing about some of these Coursera or all of the, the Coursera MOOCs is that they can also stand on their own as a digital certificate or um, two of these Coursera MOOCs are, are typically in an Illinois four credit course. So um, you can take a MOOC, you can take two MOOCs together that will be included in an Illinois course. Uh, and those are built into the syllabus for the Illinois course. So think about the MOOCs as um, kind of like your foundational material, or sometimes we refer to them as your virtual textbook in your Illinois course. If you've earned a MOOC certificate um, after completing a Coursera course, you are able to use that progress in your I Illinois course. So once admitted into um, one of our programs or one of the GIS credentials, um, your Coursera progress will be migrated over and you will not have to repeat that MOOC. Um, you definitely are going to want to refer back to that information as you move through the high engagement component, but you will um, get a completion grade for that previously uh, completed MOOC. The other main portion of or component, I guess, of the Illinois courses is the high engagement component. Um, this will be in addition to the MOOC material or the Coursera uh, material that you'll have in a course. The high engagement component is going to build on those MOOCs and that foundational material and give you the real world scenarios and, and projects to pull through the concepts that you've already learned um, on Coursera. So the high engagement component will be made up of a 90 minute live class each week on Zoom where your professor will, will give their lecture. You'll have a small group breakout session, um, one or two in these live classes. And um, these live classes are offered at several different times during the day to accommodate all of our global time zones. So don't, don't worry about uh, being able to, to have an option for your, for your time zone. And then your faculty is available for office hours where you can discuss current assignments or have discussions with your professors and your TA. So that was just a, an overview of the, the Illinois course um, components. The Coursera and the high engagement component make up every Illinois course. So now I wanna dive a little bit deeper into the funding. Um, the, the the topic of this this I degree workshop and and answer that question how I'm going to fund this I degree we'll talk a little bit about tuition structure the university bursar office which is the main office that handles tuition and payment questions we will uh, talk a little bit about payment options and then I'll tell you about the the scholarship opportunities that we have uh, currently um, before we jump in on that Brian what how, how was your experience with tuition and paying your tuition and paying for your degree? Was it easy? Um, not as far as paying for it, but I mean, just navigating all of those platforms um, and, and actually paying your tuition. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was super uh, simple. So I did get tuition, some tuition reimbursement from my company. Um, so working with the bursar's office was a regular thing for me, as well as just my payment options, right? So Everybody will be equipped with a student portal and all the links are there for you anywhere you need to go in terms of like when your bills are due, how much it'll cost. And then they are more than willing to help you with any tuition reimbursement documents that need to be submitted for um, your company. So obviously every company is going to be very different with their requirements. So mine had very specific requirements of what needed to be included in that documentation. Um, and so the bursar's office uh, was very helpful if, you know, the website has some forms that are auto-generated if you plug in certain information, but granted that may not be tailored to what every company needs. So the bursar's office or the different options I had, they were really helpful in sending me specifically what I needed. So I was able to get reimbursed by my company. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, cost and when to pay, you know, it's a pay as you go system. So based on what you register for, that term will then come up as what it, what is owed. And it was super simple and it's all there in front of you. And then, like I said, you're a phone call away from them to answer your questions with anything you need. That's great feedback. I know that can, the, the funding portion and paying tuition and, and dealing with those, those questions can be difficult. So that's really good to hear. So as Brian said, um, the main thing that you really need to know is that paying for your geese education um, is gonna follow this pay-as-you-go tuition structure. 
this really does offer a little bit of a built-in financial planning um, for you in that there's no lump sum payment and you only pay for the classes that you are registered for. So the process starts with registering for your first course before the semester starts. And then tuition will post your account right around that first week of, of class. And then it won't be due until about a month after classes start. So for instance, if you registered for a course this August, tuition will be billed around August 10th when classes start, and then it would not be due until September 28th. So um, one other note on that is that if you do register for both terms in a semester, so each semester has two eight-week terms um, included in it, um, if you register for both of them at the beginning of the semester, both of those term tuitions would be due on September 28th. If you wanted to spread that out a little bit even further, you would wait to register for that second term um, once we open, you know, when we alert you that you can register for that. Um, and then that payment would, would not be due until November 28th after that October program start or course start. So a really nice way to, to be able to spread payments out over time. This slide breaks down each program and the total tuition. Don't let all these numbers scare you. Um, it really is very straightforward as far as how we charge for courses. And um, that's really kind of what I want you to focus on in this slide. The IMBA and the IMSM both charge $320 per credit hour. So um, for the IMBA program, since there's 72 credit hours, that is gonna come in at $23,040. Um, for the IMSM program, that is only going to have 36 credit hours, which will put 36 times 320 um, to, to equal $11,520. So those two programs, that is the total tuition. Um, for the IMSA, it's a little bit, um, a little bit different in that accounting courses are going to um, cost $850 per credit hour. And so that would make a four credit hour accounting course 3,400 and a two credit hour course would be 1,700. Um, and so the reason that there's a range here from 20 to 27K is that you are required to take at least one non-accounting elective course. So that's going to be an IMSM or an IMBA course, um, elective course. And those remember are only $320 per credit hour. So that's why there's a range um, depending on your elective. So if you take one or maybe three uh, non-accounting electives, um, that's gonna be less expensive than the $850 accounting uh, course that you could take, accounting elective that you could take. So that's the reason there's a range there. Um, there are some course materials for the IMSA program um, that won't exceed $1,500, but that is it. So um, that is just an overview of the estimated expenses. And this slide is just a graphic of all the courses and specializations um, in the IMBA. I just wanted to briefly show you this so that you could just have a visual. Um, the first four specializations listed on here each have three courses within them, as you can see. And each of those are four credits so that if you look at strategic leadership and management on this first um, line, those three courses are all 1280, as we said. And so that one special specialization would come in, come in at $3,840. Um, if you multiply that by six, because you're going to do six specializations, that's where you're going to come up with that $23,040. So very straightforward. Um, I just thought that kind of simplifies it a little bit on this slide. As Brian said, the University Bursar office, um, and this is um, it, it, that office is where you're going to find all things financial and also referred to um, during your new student checklist. So you will receive a new student checklist upon admission that will refer you to this checklist is, that you can see on this slide um, and you'll complete steps one through six. Um, the folks at the bursar office are very helpful and nice. I've called them many times just to make sure I understand the process and they're very open to questions and um, and, and and just great. Did you have to communicate with them quite a bit, Brian? Sorry, yes, Kate, could you repeat that one more time? 
did you have to communicate with the, the bursar office quite a bit and how how did that go for you yeah absolutely so um you know it at the beginning it was pretty frequent until uh i had an idea of like what was needed on the forms that i needed to submit to my uh company but in terms of just my my personal and individual payments it was really easy all all the answers and uh you know information i needed was on their website uh the payment was super simple um and honestly maybe the last year i rarely had to talk with them because it was kind of just a seamless transition everything was flowing pretty good mm -hmm. okay cool um that that was my experience too i think they were they were great to talk to here's the main page of the bursar website where you'll find um your billing information payment info refunds um student loan information so it's all really straightforward and right there and easy to access and then lastly i just wanted to touch on the many payment options um, that you'll have for your for paying your tuition bill you can make online payments via e-check or credit card um, as a student or you can enter an authorized payer you can pay by mail you can make advanced payments for our international students, we have a couple options in Flywire and Pay My Tuition, and they'll walk you through um, setting those up. We also have sponsored billing that Brian touched on a little bit. If your company is reimbursing you, we'll give you all the documents for that um, in order to get that reimbursement. And then lastly, there is a, a payment plan option where you can spread your payment over, um, I think it's a maximum of six, six installments over one semester. Um, that does come with a non-refundable cost each semester though of $40. So, um, but that sounds like a great, a, a great option. Um, and then you can also choose to just do it over two months, three months, four months, there's, there's many options, so. And then um, lastly, I, I told you that I would tell you a little bit about our scholarships that we offer. Um, all three master's degrees are eligible or we offer a Coursera scholarship. This is going to cover 70% of your tuition, and this scholarship is need-based as well as diversity-based. Very competitive. We, we only award a, a small amount of these um, scholarships in partnership with Coursera. Um, the prompt, if you're, if you're curious, is why are you applying for the scholarship and how do you feel the scholarship will help you achieve your goals in higher education? Um, please explain either your need for financial assistance, to pursue the program or how you've demonstrated a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion um, via personal mentorship and community involvement. So um, we're looking for a little bit of um, background there. And then we offer one other scholarship, the Forte Scholarship. Uh, this reimburses 20,000 for just the IMBA program. And it is awarded to one female recipient each term. This scholarship is really looking at women in leadership um, with diverse backgrounds and also women who have a commitment to advancing women in business. Both of these applications are within our program applications. Um, so there'll be a short essay to include there. And then we also um, only consider scholarships for our priority one and our priority two deadline. Um, if you're interested in those, you definitely want to apply earlier than later. Our next deadline to apply um, is coming up for an October start. So if you are still wanting to start this fall, we, we have a deadline of September 8th. So that will be your last chance to start the IMBA or the IMSM program this year. And then applications are now open for spring 2023. If you're just kind of thinking ahead and, and joining us today um, to check out, check out your options, um, the IMBA, IMSM, and IMSA programs are all open for a January start um, right now. And the first priority deadline with the most benefits is October 6th, where you won't have an application fee. You can apply for those scholarships um, if you would like. You can have early access to the Coursera material that will be included in your courses, early registration, um, and also early access to some of our networking opportunities. So um, it's always good to apply early. So we shared a lot of information here. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to answer all of your questions. But before we do that, um, one last poll. 
what are your plans to apply? Are you interested, um, not ready to apply? Are you planning to apply in the next year? Did you already start your application? We're just curious where you're at. Looks like we have a little bit of everything. And a few of you are already students, so that's excellent. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let's take a look and see if there's any questions. I do want to encourage you to ask any questions that you have of Brian, because we're lucky enough to have um, a current student here and they always have great perspectives on things. Um, and as Brian said, he's in the IMBA program. Any brief comments on, on overall the, the funding or anything that you wanted to add in, Brian? No, I just, I think that, um, you know, I just would encourage everybody to, to you know, if you've started those applications or you're interested, definitely uh, keep pushing forward. This program is, is uh, fantastic. You know, for me, it was really rewarding. Um, you know, the classes, but then all the extracurriculars, the community, and just the feel of this program in general is just fantastic. So I can't say enough about it. That's why I'm still involved even a year after being done. So yeah, I mean, and and the you know the payment. There's a lot of different opportunities for help. Uh, the bursar's there to help you guys. They're really easy to work with, as well as most of the, all of the staff that I've dealt with. So yeah, I encourage all of you to just keep pushing forward. There's a question, Brian, about completing the program in 36 months, or do you have the flexibility as far as like employment reimbursement to spread it out? Um, how long did you take to complete your program? Yeah, absolutely. So I finished the program in uh, two and a half years. So typically they they talk about there's a two year, a two and a half year and a three year track. But the program does have flexibility um, you could, to finish within a five year span to help cover, uh, to help spread out that tuition reimbursement. So yes, but um, they don't talk about it as much, but you do have up to five years to complete it. And then, and then the grad college kicks you out, right? No, that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it is, that is really one of the best parts of our program, I think, is the flexibility. You know, we're all really busy and it, it's amazing that you're taking on this huge master's degree challenge. And we understand that and everybody has many things going on in their lives. So um, the flexibility is really key in that you can if you foresee in the future that your job's not going to be too busy and you have like a, a kind of a light summer, take two courses and, and take those together and then go back to one in the fall. One note on that, um, and maybe Brian, you can touch on this too, is we do have a full advising team that um, are academic advisors that really are great in helping you pair those courses together, like a qualitative one with a quantitative or maybe a slightly um, I don't want to say easy, but just a less time consuming course with a, a more difficult course. And, and that's their job. And they're here for you in exp express advising appointments or office hours or just reaching out to them via email. So um, they're a great resource. Did you use the, the, the advisors much, Brian? Uh, absolutely. Uh, very much early on. Um, and actually throughout the whole program, I was actually very close with my advisor. She has now since moved on to a different role in the university, but she was so fantastic. Um, I know the structure has kind of changed so you can talk to multiple advisors nowadays, but um, absolutely that, you know, when you put together a degree plan from the start, that is not set in stone. So as things were occurring, as I realized I can speed up and I want to take more than one class at a time, or I want to you know, take one, just one at this current term, because maybe something in your life is going to be really hectic in the couple months that you're going to be taking class. They are there to work with you to help you understand that if you were to either add or drop a class, when you could potentially take that class again, and then obviously making sure you're not missing like the target graduation date that you had set for yourself. Um, and to Kate's point, yes, absolutely. There are classes that are uh, much more time consuming or challenging. And then there are the classes that are much less time consuming and uh, a little bit, I will use the word easier because they were definitely easier than some. Um, those advisors will be very helpful in helping you pair those classes together to make sure that you have the most balanced and um, manageable class structure as possible. Great points. 
I see a question about the veterans grant. Um, does that cover online virtual programs? Yes, um, you definitely can use that. Amy, if you don't mind putting in the chat, the veterans grant or the veterans um, website so that they can reach out to them if they have questions. And then um, also there is financial aid. You, I recommend filling out the FAFSA uh, form before you apply um, and just see if you're eligible for domestic students only, but see if you're eligible for any financial aid there. Um, let's see, one other question. Um, you know, this is a good question, Brian. I don't know if you can speak to this. Does the IMBA also include coursework um, for SAFE or SCRUM certification? Did you take any courses that included any of that? I personally did not, but okay. I think there may be options, but I, I am actually, to be honest, I'm not aware of those. Yeah, um, we could get your information and, and dive a little bit deeper into that if you want to um, maybe give your email to, to Amy Simpson. Great questions. Any other questions for Brian about his experience? I saw one question on the I uh, appearing on your transcript or your certificate. Um, Brian can attest to that. You will earn a master's of business administration, big diploma from the University of Illinois. Um, and it also does not say online anywhere on your transcripts or your certificate. Was that correct, Brian? Yes, that is absolutely correct. It's a fully accredited MBA uh, from the University of Illinois. The I is, don't even worry about it. <laughs> Do you have yours prominently displayed in your office? I hope. It is, yes, which I am not currently at at the moment since I am working from home, but it is there, yes. Excellent. Can you talk a little bit about the time, the hours of the week that are that are going to, it, it will take per course um, to commit to the program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, when I was starting, everyone kind of said it's like five to 10 hours per class per week. And I think that really is going to be dependent on the classes that you're taking. So I've always told people that that is pretty accurate. But so, for example, you may have a leadership course that the Coursera component is maybe 45 minute, minutes of videos a week, but then plus your homework, plus your group work, plus your study time, you're kind of looking at that five to six, seven hours per week. But then when you talk about a course like financial investments or maybe some of the accounting courses where you know your Coursera videos in one week could be five to six hours alone, plus your studying, plus your quizzes, plus, you know, the, uh, the other things in your live sessions, can't forget about an hour and a half live session. That's when you're starting to get closer to the 10 to 12 to 15 hours for that class a week. So uh, my, my best advice is to just really, you got to spread out the work. Don't put it all for one day. I'm a morning person. So I did a lot of stuff like early mornings on weekends, uh, a little bit in the evenings. And then I was very much, um, I did work during my lunch breaks. Um, during the day as well. Sorry, I see another question in here. Can you talk about the some of the networking opportunities for degree students? Absolutely. Obviously, the, the dynamic has changed with COVID, but the great thing about this program is that it is all online. So, uh, you know, I my first year in the program was in 2019, so I was really lucky to be involved in a lot of the student meetups. I went on a global immersion to Brazil. Um, there's a mentorship program. There are a ton of extracurricular activities that you can get involved in that'll expand your networking opportunities. So like I said, I, I did the Illinois Business Consulting Group, which was completely optional for a student. Um, I did the immersion. I did the student meetups, which for, you know, for me, I live in the Chicagoland area. So obviously there's a, there's a pretty large community of students that went to Illinois. Um, there's a social platform called uh, Workplace that you guys will have access to, which is basically, it's, it looks exactly like Facebook, but it is for everybody in the program to connect and, and to network. And that way you can see maybe who's local to your area potentially, and then you can do meetups on your own. Um, and then obviously there's the Illini link. When you graduate, you all have access to the full alumni network after you graduate that you can actually keep in touch with folks and reach out and try to connect that way as well. 
So tons of opportunities to, to network for, for students. And can't forget about iConverge, which is a three to four day weekend. The, the university and the program will invite you to come to campus. And that way you can actually have those in-person interactions with your students, uh, other students and professors. You really have done a lot of the networking opportunities, Brian. I have, yes. That's awesome. Excellent. Um, I saw a couple questions about the, the scholarship. So the Coursera scholarship is um, for international or domestic students, and both of the scholarship applications are found within your program application. So you'll start an application, you'll create a login in your email, it'll walk you through the steps, um, and then there'll be a section for scholarships, and it'll ask you, are you interested in applying to one of these? You'll click a box, and then you'll be able to upload um, an essay, and the prompts will also be there for you. Um, for, for your the specific scholarship that you're interested in. Okay, I think that is about all of the questions that I've seen and great questions. Thank you so much for adding all those into the Q&A. I'm gonna flash up our last screen here just to get that QR code. Um, back up on the screen for you. That should be on your screen now. Um, again, if you just scan that with your, your camera, myself or one of our admission counselors will reach out to you via email or phone and answer whatever questions you have, or just talk about your goals and see if you're, maybe you're having trouble figuring out which program is right for you. We are happy to discuss that and, and share um, a little bit more information on that. Any last thoughts, Brian, before we, we take off? Um, yeah, actually just let me expand a little bit on the networking too, because some I did see someone saying like students living outside of Illinois. So yeah, absolutely. This is such a global program. And you got to remember it is your interaction every week in the live sessions is going to be one opportunity to network with fellow students where you're going to be in a live session with, you know, 75 to 100 plus students at once. And there's breakout rooms. You're going to meet people doing breakout rooms. Every class, you're going to have group work at where you're going to meet with your groups outside of the actual live session you guys are going to meet maybe a couple times a week so there's another opportunity to meet students and get to uh, build a good re report with some folks me personally within my first two classes that i took in this program i had met two to three people virtually that i connected really well with and they were folks that we did um, individual study sessions together virtually um, some even in person if they live locally. So there are tons of opportunities, even if you live outside of Illinois, to still network. Um, but just one thing to keep in mind is like you're going to get out of it what you put into it, right? So if you're someone who goes out there, put yourself out there, reaches out to people, your network and your, those who you, who you know is going to expand a lot much, a lot more than those who kind of sit idle and just um just go through the motions so be willing to put yourself out there and try new things and and introduce yourself to certain people everyone is very welcoming in this program that's great feedback often people ask in interviews they'll ask me you know like what does a successful what makes a successful student and typically i do say those students that are really engaging and asking the questions and going to office hours, those are the students that get the most of our, out of our program, um, just like you said. So thank you for sharing that. Um, well, I think we're gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for those last uh, few tidbits, Brian. We really appreciate you being here. Um, as I said, we love having our, our current students here and it gives us a chance to uh, connect again. Um, it was my pleasure to be here today and thank you to Amy Simpson as well for handling the Q&A and the chat. My email is ked at illinois.edu if you'd like to reach out directly to me, um, but we have many ways to connect and hopefully we will hear from you soon. So thank you so much everyone. Have a great rest of your week um, and we hope to see you soon.